Yes, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. A very good morning to you wherever you are on the globe. You're on the African continent, in Europe, or in America. Wherever you are, I'm excited to be back here fully today. Yeah, for those of you that missed my absence, I am back. Like I told you yesterday, we are back. We've relocated and we are ready to kickstart the business as usual. Daily update on Chelsea news and some other football news around the world. But right now, we want to focus on Chelsea and we will start with Chelsea. We will be diving into transfer market. The window is yet to open, but a lot of discussions are taking place. Teams are discussing right now. Players are discussing with their agents. Agents are talking to clubs. Clubs are talking to coaches on what they need to buy in the summer. And therefore, we'll be giving you every update on this channel. Well, this morning, for your breakfast, dear friend, I have watched Villa versus Chelsea's second half many times. At least three times. Chelsea versus Aston Villa games, the second half, I watched three times. The more I watch, the more I'm impressed. But, 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 <laughs> the more I watch, the more I'm impressed, honestly. But I don't know if it was just a contingency plan or contingency tweak against Villa or how Poch will want to play going forward. I'm not too sure if it was just a contingency plan or tweak or how Pochettino is going to be playing going forward. If you watch that second half very well, they, they come back. You ask yourself, then what went wrong in our previous games that in second half we always give up the, the game to our opponents? Kukurele's dwell. Kukurele's dual role, dual, the dual role of Kukurele was very important. Kukurele's dual role as a, a, a midfield, additional midfield at the same time, a, a left back, was very important. He has the engine to play in midfield. Yes, he has the engine to play in midfield, as we saw in that Villa game, the second half. Counter press and still cover the left wing. He triggered pressing and Badashelli. And Chaloba did well to jump into midfield and add extra presence. It is a counter presence of Makukurela that triggered Badashelli and Chaloba to jump into the midfield as well to add extra presence in the midfield, making sure that midfield is still full enough for the attacking players to have the space to move forward. And by so doing, it helped the defenders, the, our defense, to be stabilized. It stabilized our defense. But the most important thing is that we press as a group. The second half, we press as a group. When Kukurela triggered a press, Badashelli, Kasaido, and Chaloba went tight against their men. They always went tight against their men, leaving Villa without a free man as a receiver. Yeah. Go back, take your time and watch the game very well. You understand what I'm trying to put across. We were aggressive in defending the mid zone and allowed little counters against us. We were aggressive, very, very aggressive in mid zone areas and, and allowed little counters against us. In fact, there was none even. I could count one that was glaring when Rogers picked a pocket from Thiago and nothing more was significant. That tells you that the contingency plan or whatever you want to call it, the tweak in that second half worked to perfection. Going forward, are we going to be seeing more of that or this was just an contingency or emergency plan to get the team back in order? Well, if we can replicate that every game, if we can replicate this same system every game with the same energy, hmm, with the same energy, we can successfully defend in midfield and keep teams far from our box. This is what 
I have hope for in our coming game against Tottenham. If you can do this, we can. If you can replicate that in in our next game against Tottenham, meaning that we will not concede a single goal. Because we're going to keep teams far from our box area. I hope to see more of this in our coming games. Dear friend, like I said, this is your breakfast news. One player that impressed me most in that game was one of our goal scorers, Noni Madweke. Noni Madweke is gradually becoming a key player. In addition to Kopama, he's gradually becoming a key player in the squad. And I would like to see more of him. But Noni Madweke versus Aston Villa, one goal, one assist, two chances created, four shots, he had four shots. Three passes into the final third. Seven touches in opposition box. Six out of eight successful dribbles. That's 75%. Five recoveries. Ten out of 14 grand dwells won. That's 71%. Two out of two area dwells won. 100%. Arguably, his best game in a Chelsea shirt. His best game in a Chelsea shirt. Can we see more of this from Noni Maduke in the coming days? Is it true that he is supposed to be one of our star players in every game? Well, personally, I am impressed. On a more serious note. Moving on to another player that impressed me so much. Conor Gallagher. Dear friend, it is evidently clear that Chelsea has not put any contract yet on the table for Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher still has not been offered a new contract. Chelsea have a 15 million price tag with Spurs and Newcastle following development. That is the latest news, dear friend. That is the latest news now on that front. Meanwhile, we are in the market trying to locate players to buy. Yes, Chelsea are in the market. The transfer window is not yet open, but Chelsea are reportedly interested in pursuing Manchester City wing, winger Jack Grealish as they prepare to spend big again this summer. Jack Grealish is one of our targets now for the summer. Whether the player himself is willing to come to Chelsea, a team that is not in the Champions League, or not is one thing, but Chelsea are prepared again this summer to spend big. We wait to see that relates to Chelsea. <laughs> I know most of you are there will say, Oh, this is impossible, it can't be right. But in football, nothing is impossible, anything can happen. In football, anything can happen. Well, before I let you go this morning for a breakfast, dear friend. I am right on speaking on Nicholas Jackson. I am right speaking on Nicholas Jackson. Many have been speaking so much about Jackson these few days. Yes, since after the game against Aston Villa, many have been speaking a lot up about him. And this is what he said. He said, I watched him fully again during Chelsea's 2 to draw with Aston Villa. And I have watched him in the last three or four games. And the chances that he has missed always take pre precedence. When people are talking about him, but I am seeing that I'm seeing that guy's face. I'm seeing that guy's face, his link, his touch. Something is happening there. If he gets that goal scoring right, there is something in there. I'm telling you, there is something in there. The pace of Jackson. Is something you cannot take away from him. His link up play is something you cannot take away from him. Dear friend, this guy just needs time. This is his first season and he scored 10 goals. Don't underrate the player. You as why am I always talking about Jackson? Listen, if you know football, if you really know football, you will know that a player like Jackson, 21 years, 22 years old, first season in the Premier League. 10 goals, it's not a bad achievement. It is not. Like, I rightfully, I right said rightfully, all that he needed now is to discover more goals, to score more. 
and get his confidence. Well, dear friend, let me let you go. I'll be back with transfer news. There's so much happening around the transfer market. And I'll be back with that later in the afternoon, dear friend. I would like you to like the video, share the video, and let me hear from the comment section about everything that I've said here. I know that this is not fully loaded, yet it is your breakfast. I shall be back with more exclusives. See you in the next one when you see me, dear friend. Shalom and peace.